two, we have Gary from Google here, uh, who is we're very pleased to have him here to answer some questions on everything and anything that you want to ask. So I've got a list of questions that... Okay, not everything. Not everything. Some things. Um, yeah, I've got a list of questions that have been sent and that have cropped up over time, but obviously we'd like any questions from you as well. So we are recording this, so if you want to ask a question, if you just put your hand up and wait till somebody with a microphone comes before you ask it so we can get a cop uh, we can make sure we hear it all, that would be great. And if at any point during that, we'll move through the topics. If you've got a question on a specific topic that you want to ask, then just put your hand up and we'll come to it as and when. So, first question. Trying to make it seem scary, but it's moving. Um, so you are not scary in, scary in general. So yeah, no, I know. Damn it. So href lang, I guess we start with that because that was how we ended yeah. up. And it didn't get a particularly great reception from people maybe using it. And there seems to be that there are often problems with the implementation of it and people struggle to get it right. Why do you think that is? What are the... What are the issues you see with its implementation? I'm not sure about the not so great reception because I know sites that use it very successfully mm -hmm. and who gain lots of traffic because of hreflang uh, or because of using hreflang. Um, but I do agree that it's a, it's a very confusing annotation. Uh, as with any annotation, um, there will be uh, implementation errors. Like we see lots of implementation errors, even with rel canonical, for example, like the number of rel canonicals that point to example.com, for example, you, you don't, like, it's crazy. Um, so, so there are um, problems with, with any annotation. The complexity of hreflang comes from the fact that you have to cross annotate pages. So if you annotate A uh, or page A, then you will have to annotate page B as well, pointing back to page A. Um, and if you have a big site, let's say Amazon size, um, then obviously this will be an insanely complicated thing. And if, it, if something is complicated, then people will mess it up. Um, the most common thing that I think um, is, 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 is the, the biggest problem um, that uh, we see is that um, people don't do the cross-referencing. Um, if someone, or if they put up uh, an HF lang pointing to the Spanish version uh, of the page, then they will forget to put up an annotation on the Spanish version of, of the page pointing back to the um, other version. Um, this is extremely common. Um, and we tried to send messages about hreflang annotations in the past. Um, it, has, it had some success, success rate, uh, not so immense, because um, I think there is also a lack of tools that can validate hreflang. Um, and that, again, is probably because um, it's an insane, or it can get insanely complicated, um, the, the whole annotation. And it basically, you have to calculate a, a link graph um, and then validate the, all, the, all the links in the graph. Um, second one is uh, probably language and country codes. Uh, as Andy said, like um, someone was trying to target Los Angeles um, and they thought that using LA as a language code or country code would be great when that actually means Laos. Um, that actually happened on our own help center. Um, and we were trying to chase down people, and we were actually arguing with people that like you cannot target with this um, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, and they were like, no, 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 we know that we can. It's like, dude, we implemented it. It's like, we, like, we know that you cannot. <laughs> but um, that's what SEOs do. Um, they argue with us. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's brave. Um, so is actually the complications around hreflang Google's way of telling everyone to use CCTLDs? How do you come up with these questions? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just came up with it. That's a good point. Surely. Because it's easier. Then it's clear there's no confusion. Right? Um, they are two different things. Um, um, the last time I was paying attention to Andy's presentation, he had a slide. <laughs> Uh, where he listed the different things that you can use for targeting. Yeah. Uh, 
um, and one was uh, CCTLDs, um, and one was HRFLANK, and that is the correct perception of, of how these things should work. Um, if you have money and you can invest in a CCTLD, then you do that to get a tiny, well, actually not so tiny, uh, boost in the local um, or in the country where the CCTLD is local to and where the, the, the user is searching. Um, with hreflang, uh, what you are doing is telling that pages in, in a cluster, so basically if A links to B, B links to A, um, then those pages should be able to use each other's ranking signals. Um, essentially, if you have a page in English that does really well in an English market, um, and you have a page in Spanish um, that normally without hreflang, that doesn't mean that your Spanish page will do well in, the, in Spanish Google. Um, basically, that Spanish page would, without hreflang would have to collect the links, it would have to collect all the other ranking signals that we have on its own uh, to, to rank well. With hreflang, you can tell us that Here's, here are two pages that are uh, close to equivalent. Um, share the ranking signals between the two. So basically, if someone will search for a term that would trigger the, um, or that would show the English, English page really high, then if the user's language is Spanish, then we would actually promote the Spanish language uh, version using the signals from the English version. And this is the other problem with hreflang that even internally is extremely complicated. <laughs> and explaining it, <laughs> explaining it is quite a nightmare. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so hreflang and, and uh, CCTL, these are two different things. One helps as soon as you um, bought and move to the CCTLD. The other one, if it's correct, then it will help share um, um, signal between pages. And that is uh, a big help in, in, in many cases. We've seen quite a number of sites that decided that it's a good idea to remove uh, hreflang annotations, uh, even correct ones, um, and they saw a massive uh, drop in traffic um, just because like we were not able anymore um, to share the ranking signals between the different language versions, language country versions. Um, I think if you can, if your developers are masochistic, for example, then implementing, implementing age of lang is a good idea if you have um, several language country versions. Um, though um, I, I came here with this thought that we would brainstorm a little bit and would try to come up with anything better, really. Um, Basically, he's asking you to reinvent hreflang and give him the answers to how to make it better, just to clarify. Um, basically, I, I, I would like to know what doesn't work for you with hreflang. Hang on. Uh, if all your pages are fully, it only works if all pages are fully indexed in your site. So if yeah. Google hasn't discovered that hreflang alternate, it, does, it, work, it doesn't work across the entire set yeah. of pages. So if you have, like, for instance, a really strong Mexico site, but not a very strong Spanish site with terms of link profile and everything mm -hmm. else, Google may not have even indexed your Spanish page. So it would never, it would never correct the issue in the search results on, in Google Spain because it hasn't been indexed yet. Okay. This, that is something that we can fix on our end. Um, in theory, hreflang annotations would also help with getting indexed um, or getting the localized versions indexed. Um, Yeah. Okay, I can I can look into that. 
because it was implemented with that idea that um, it should speed up indexing for, for local versions. Uh, that might have stopped working, perhaps. Um, yeah, you would be amazed how many code changes we make and break stuff accidentally. Um, yeah. <laughs> Any other issues? This is the time to share. Or you can just ask me questions. Or you can ask questions. Yeah. Hi. Uh, is it also that? Uh, oh. Hi. Uh, is it also that um, when the HF blank tag is not implemented correctly that it gets ignored? So if, for example, yeah. if you have a certain page and you have like uh, 10 locals and uh, five URLs are not uh, yeah. working? Yeah. Yeah, that is how it works. Basically, if, if the annotation is uh, incorrect, then we will just ign ignore it. Yeah, and uh, you ignore the whole um, for the just, just that link. So basically, if you have A, B, C, and the link between A, B is not correct, then B, B would not be uh, in, the, in the cluster. A, C would still, still work. OK. Oh, boy. No, 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 no. <laughs> Why did you give him the mic? So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not so you, him. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Two, two things. The first thing is I'd, I don't recall you explicitly saying as strongly as you have today about sharing signals across different elements of an hreflang set. So does that mean that that's changed or that's been upweighted or just um, being more frank? I, I think I just used different words. <laughs> um, that wasn't one of my options. <laughs> um, the so sharing As I said, it's, it's very hard to explain in a way that I don't give away too much. Uh, sharing well, signal. We don't mind. We don't mind. <laughs> you don't. Um, um, sharing signals. Understand that as we promote the page just because, or we we promote the localized version just because we know that the let's say the English page works really well for this query. Um, that's what sharing signals means um, because the English page works well, the Spanish page will work well as well. I used to be related to canonicals when you were talking about yeah. canonicals and hreflang. So effectively, you're saying it has the power of the old canonical thing, but within hreflang itself, um, more or less. So the, the thing is that, um, as, as he saw it, that if a page cannot become canonical, like it cannot get indexed, then the cluster will be broken. Um, so we still need every single page in the cluster to be able to become canonical. Um, and we have, we have um, a few, or specifically one algorithm that helps with that, um, or used to, um, that uh, basically says or tells the canonicalization uh, system, uh, bidding system that uh, if someone has an hreflang, if a page has, has an hreflang annotation, then make sure that that gets indexed. Um, at one point, we also had this requirement that you put up rel canonical on the hreflang, or besides the hreflang. I know that we dropped that, fortunately. Um, well, well, but actually, in theory, that could still help. When you, when you launched it, you launched the rel canonical with then you tagged on HRF long afterwards. Yeah. That was how it was launched. So it was obviously like the canonical was the big solution, but then in HRF long has, has overtaken. I, I don't think rel canonical was ever meant to be a solution for uh, localization and, and geotargeting. Um, rel canonical, that's a way to tell search engines which version of a URL is or should show up in search results. That's what it should do. Um, if you have like five language, language versions for a page, um, then if the five or four of them point to one, because I don't know why, uh, with the RAL canonical, um, then it's very likely that that one that gets those uh, RAL canonical reference, references will show up in search results, basically ignoring all the others um, for international searchers. Um, Age of Lang, on the other hand, um, is actually meant to help getting localized versions indexed, crawled and indexed, um, and then showing the 
the localized versions in the results at the right time for the right user. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that the two had similar um, goals ever. Um, yeah. Okay, the second point was, a, was a, you were asking about brainstorming for what to replace it with. Yeah. Um, I would think most systems c would cope better if there was like a cluster number that was all the pages belong to this cluster. There are the X number of pages in the cluster and this is the, the country of language coding. But that's just my suggestion. Have you talked to Pierre Farr? No. I was Reason. chatting with him when I was in London two weeks ago and he told me the same thing. No, I haven't, I haven't compared notes with him at all. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so we have two votes for cluster IDs. It's just that CMS systems could um, generate that more yeah. easily than they could the linking back between different languages yeah. and countries. Um, I'm, I think that's a good idea. Um, the problem will be, I think, uh, that it will be even less transparent for, uh, for those who mangle with HTML. Um, because if you have clear URLs, um, it's very easy to, it's relatively easy to tell them apart, like the Spanish, uh, British, uh, American, Canadian versions. But if you have clusters, cluster IDs, then identifying the cluster by ID can be quite challenging, I guess. Um, I don't know, I, like we have to think about it, um, and since this is the second time I hear the cluster ID idea, um, perhaps it's a good idea. Um, yeah, we'll think about it. I, I, I'm, yeah, the other thing that I, I was thinking that we could set up like a working group for, for this, um, and basically have some engineers from us and those who are interested uh, join the working group and like throw around ideas about what could work or what would work for different um, uh, companies and what doesn't work for uh, for them with the current setup with Ahreflang. Um, I'll need to think more about that as well, but yeah, that, that was another idea. Any other Ahreflang or geotargeting questions? Ask me, ask me. I've got one. Um, I know that you have. It's, so I was going to move on to mobile, and this kind of connects, really, mm -hmm. with it. That talking about hreflang, you know, linking between the pages on the site, making sure that you're linking back. How mm -hmm. does that fit in when you've got mobile site as well, a separate mobile site? Yeah. Um, that will be really interesting, because we have no idea. Good. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> I think John Miller was, uh, I think at SMX Munich or one of the conferences, uh, he showed uh, a, a graph um, how you have to annotate with HF length mobile sites, or you had that too. Was that I, I wasn't really paying attention to your comment. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and uh, it was a nightmare. Uh, it, it is literally a nightmare, and that was one of the reasons we, or I started thinking about like what else can we do besides hreflang, or what can we replace hreflang with, uh, because of that graph. Um, like if you ever, if you have ever been in a jungle and you like all those, like mess that's there, uh, that's how that graph looks like. It's just a chaos, um, and that's not ideal for for publishers because. If hreflang is already complex, if we throw in uh, mobile-first indexing or mobile pages um, in the mix, then it just gets like massively more confusing, um, and that means more broken annotations. 